Hi everyone. Welcome to the Simply Learn YouTube channel. This session will be about calling gRPC. Before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. In this session, you will learn about what gRPC is. Next, you will learn about the gRPC basic concepts. You will get to know when the gRPC is used and further, you will learn about the strengths and weaknesses of gRPC. And moreover, we will learn about the companies using gRPC. Let's start with what gRPC is. gRPC is an open source framework that handles RPC that is remote procedure calls and helps build scalable and fast APIs. It allows the client and server applications to communicate transparently and help developers develop corrected systems. This framework works on HTTP/2 protocol buffers and other modern technology stacks to ensure maximum API security, performance and scalability. Next, we will learn about the gRPC basic concepts that is protocol buffers, streaming, HTTP/2 and channels. Let's understand these concepts in elaboration. First one, we'll start with protocol buffers. Protocol buffers or protobuf is Google's serialization or deserialization protocol. It is used as interface definition language (IDL) and serialization toolset by gRPC. Both the client and server should have the latest and same proto file. gRPC stores your data and function contracts in the form of proto files. Proto C, that is the protobuf compiler generates client and server code using the dot proto file it loads the code using the dot proto file into the memory at runtime and uses the in memory schema to serialize or deserialize the binary message you can exchange the data faster with protobuf as it requires fewer cpu resources since data is converted into a binary format and encoded messages are smaller in size the next concept we have is streaming. Streaming is another key concept of gRPC where many processes can take place in a single request. The multiplexing capability that is sending multiple responses or receiving multiple requests together or a single TCP connection of HTTP/2 makes it possible. Now we'll see through the types of streaming. The first one is server streaming RPCs. The client sends a single request to the server and receives back a stream of data sequences that is server streaming RPCs. The next is client streaming RPCs. The client sends a stream of data or sequences to the server which then processes and returns a single response to the client that is client streaming RPCs. The next we have is bidirectional streaming RPCs. It is two way streaming where both client and server send a sequence of messages to each other without failing for a response. Now we will move to another concept that is HTTP/2. It is another key concept of gRPC. In a traditional HTTP protocol, sending multiple requests or getting multiple responses together in a single connection was impossible. A new connection will need to be created for each of them. This kind of request or response multiplexing is made possible in HTTP/2 by introducing a new layer called binary framing. And bidirectional streaming was possible full-fledged with the introduction of HTTP/2. The next concept we'll move on is channels. Channels are another key concept. The HTTP/2 streams allow many simultaneous streams on one connection. Channels extend this concept by supporting multiple streams or multiple concurrent connections. They provide a way to connect to the gRPC server on a specified address and port and are used in creating a client stuff. Now we will understand the gRPC architecture. In the following gRPC architecture diagram, we have the gRPC client and server sites. In gRPC, every client server has a gRPC stub. The gRPC client makes the local procedure call to the stub with parameters that to be sent to the server. The client stub 
then serialize the parameters with the marshalling process using protobuf and forwards the request to the local client time library in the local machine. The OS makes a call to the remote server machine via HTTP slash 2 protocol. The server's OS receives the packets and calls the server stub procedure, which decodes the received parameters and executes the respective procedure invocation using protobuf. The server stub then sends back the encoded response to the client transport layer. The client stub gets back the result message and unpacks the return parameters and the execution returns to the caller. Moving on, we will learn when to use gRPC. gRPC is used in real-time communication services where you deal with streaming calls. And it's used when efficient communication is a goal. And it's used in multi-language environments. And moreover, it is used in internal APIs where you don't have to force technology choices on clients. And it's also used in new builds as part of transforming the existing RPC API. Let's see gRPC strengths which has increased the adoption on the old RPC design methods. The first one is performance. By different evaluations, gRPC differs up to 10 times faster performance and API security than REST plus JSON communication, as it uses protobuf and HTTP/2. Additionally, protobuf serializes the message on the server and client sites, resulting in small and compact message payloads. HTTP/2 scales up the performance ranking via server push, multiplexing, and header compression. Server push enables HTTP/2 to push content from server to client before requesting, while multiplexing eliminates head-of-the-line blocking. HTTP/2 uses a more advanced compression method to make the messages smaller, resulting in faster loading. The next one we have is built-in community features. gRPC provides built-in support for commodity features such as metadata exchange encryption, authentication, deadline or timeouts, and cancellations. It also provides load balancing, service discovery, and many more. Now, we'll see another strength that is streaming. gRPC makes it much simpler to build streaming services or clients. A gRPC service supports different streaming combinations through HTTP 2, which we have seen earlier, that is client to server streaming, server to client streaming or bi-directional streaming. The next is security. The use of HTTP 2 or the TLS that is end-to-end -end encryption connection in gRPC ensures API security. gRPC encourages the use of SSL or TLS to authenticate and encrypt data exchange between the client and server. Now we have known the strengths of gRPC. Now you need to be aware of some points before choosing gRPC for developing applications. These points may affect your decision of using gRPC. The first one we'll see is limited browser support. As gRPC heavily uses HTTP/2, it is impossible to call a gRPC service from a web browser directly. No modern browser provides the control needed over web requests to support a gRPC client. Therefore, a proxy layer and gRPC web are required to perform conversions between HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2. The next is steeper learning curve. Many teams find gRPC challenging to learn. They get familiar with protobuf and look for tools to deal with HTTP 2 friction. It is a common reason why users prefer to rely on REST for as long as possible. The next is non human readable format. Protobuf compresses gRPC messages into a non-human readable format. This compiler needs the messages interface description in the file to deserialize correctly. So developers need additional tools like the gRPC command line tool to analyze protobuf payloads on the wire. And they also write manual requests and perform debugging. The next is no edge caching. While HTTP supports mediators for edge caching gRPC calls use the POST method, which is a threat to API security. The responses can't be cached through intermediaries. Moreover, the gRPC specification doesn't make any provisions 
and even indicates the wish for cache semantics between server and client. The next is limited community support. The community support for specific technology can be a big consideration for its adoption. With minimal developer support outside of Google and not many tools created for HTTP/2 and protocol buffers, the community lacks information about best practices. This is changing the developers coming in and adopting gRPC. The next we'll see is the companies using gRPC. The first one, it is an American multinational technology company that focuses on artificial intelligence, search engine technology, online advertising, cloud computing, computer software, quantum computing, e-commerce, and consumer electronics. The next company that uses gRPC is IBM that is International Business Machines Corporation. It's an American multinational technology corporation headquartered in New York with operations in over 171 countries. The next one that uses gRPC is Netflix. It's an American subscription streaming service and production company. It was launched in 1997. It offers a film and television series library through distribution deals as well as its own production that is known as Netflix Originals. The next company that uses gRPC is Cisco. It's also an American multinational technology and it's located in California. The next one we have is Dropbox. It's a file hosting service operated by the American company Dropbox Incorporation. It's also headquartered in US that is San Francisco, California. It offers cloud storage, file synchronization, personal cloud and client software. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.